This is the Morning Swim Show for Tuesday, April 24th, 2012. I'm your host, Peter Bush. We are at the Phoenix Swim Club here in Phoenix, Arizona. The Canadian Olympic team is in town, so we are dedicating this week to some special coverage of the Canadian swimmers. And joining me right now, the head coach of the Canadian Olympic team, Randy Bennett. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Brought your swimmers down to get, uh, get a tan before they head off to London? Well, we think we brought the sunshine. I sort of follows us around. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for being here. Let's go through your men's roster today. And when you think of Canadians swimming on the men's side, it typically starts with Brent Hayden. How's he doing? I notice he's, he might have a shoulder and neck issue right now. No, I think Brent, uh, Brent's a big, strong guy, and he, he sort of trains, and that's sort of his typical uh, way. It's not a bad thing. It's just Brent. He's, he's a finely tuned Ferrari, and you got to keep him finely tuned. And that's uh, the reality of a lot of these big sprint boys. But by all indications, he'll be fine this summer. That 100 was pretty good for Brent. I thought that, I think it's one of the fastest he's ever been in Canada. And, and I, I think that, uh, you know, the objective for the Canadian team is to be ready in London, not uh, necessarily, you know, uh, have to show everything in, in April, especially the kids that are, we're sure are going to make the team. Okay, one of the guys that you trained specifically up in Vancouver is Ryan Cochran, your greatest distance swimmer. Yeah. Um, tell us how he's doing. I, again, Ryan, sort of in a modified preparation strategy, the 347, he's never been better in Canada before, and, and uh, uh, the 1500 was tactically my issue rather than his issue, but he's done a great job. He's worked hard, he's, he's, he's made progress everywhere, and you know he's getting ready for London. You know That's the objective. Um, with Ryan, you said uh, he wasn't fully tapered, is that correct, for Olympic trials? No, not, it's a completely different preparation strategy than we'll use in London. Okay, you have a couple other guys on this Olympic team that you train specifically. Tell us about them. So we have this young boy, um, Alec uh, Page, and he won the 400 IM. And uh, again, uh, going forward, he's a, he's a young guy that's going to go and have the Olympic experience. But I think for the men's program, if we're going to develop it and make it better, he's the kind of guy that we need the young guys aspiring to be like. He, he swam the 400 IM, he won the 400 IM, he was third in the 200 fly. I think he was third in the 400 freestyle. He swam a great mile. Last year at the World Juniors, he was 151 on the relay and 51 on the on the relay, and so he's the kind of versatility that we need in the men's program to move it forward and 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 not not the specialization as at the young age. And so I think that going forward, we're really going to do a lot of work with him to build around the men's program. I'm sorry, I said Vancouver Victoria Academy of Swimming is where you're the coach. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and then another guy on the team. Blake Worsley, tell us about him. Blake's a, and another guy, and you know, as much as he's you know, post grad, he didn't really start swimming till he's 18, and, and he had some success at NC2A uh, in his last year, a couple of years ago in Denver, was fifth in the 500. But long course swimming and, and the, the time and the evolution, we started seeing progress on him. He was 148 3 on the lead of the relay last year and just getting more confident. So his trials results were just average, but I think that. He's getting more confident, and I almost consider him an age group or two. He's not been at it for that long. You know, kids starting swimming at 18 or 19, really starting swimming, it takes a while to get to where you want to go. All right, uh, Swimming World's Jeff Cummings talked with Blake here on the pool deck. Here's a clip of their interview. I'm here with Blake Worsley, a member of the Canadian Olympic team. Blake, uh, welcome to Arizona. Well, thank you for having me. So, uh, this is your first Olympic team. Yes, it is. Tell me what the experience is like for you to know that you're now an Olympian. You know, uh, for me personally, when I get to the games and I swim my event, that's when I'll consider myself an Olympian. But uh, I'm so proud to be representing Canada, and I'm, I'm very excited. It's a lifelong dream. So it's not official for you until you actually dive in for that 200 free. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Tell me what your rate, rate your Olympic trials experience on a scale of 1 to 10. How did it go for you? You know, honestly, I would rate it lower I would say probably a five um, I didn't perform the way I wanted to there's a lot of pressure at the meet but uh, you know I, I've been practicing all year to try and make the team on my worst day and thankfully I, uh, I had practiced that all year long so I got through but uh, I know that I am capable of a lot more than I've done and I'm, I'm really excited to get out there with no pressure this summer and swim at the Olympics. Tell me what that 200 free was like when you touched the wall turned around and saw that you had made the team. You know, honestly, it was a huge relief. It was a huge relief. I think uh, excitement always comes from going best times and doing what you, what you think you're capable of. And um, it was just a, 
I got to take a deep breath when I got on and when I touched the wall and relax because I knew that I was I was going. I'll talk about the Olympics in a minute, but just to give viewers a little bit of a background, you're born in Vancouver. Uh, you moved down to the United States when you were 10. Uh, was this your parents got jobs in, in the United States? Yeah, you know, we had some friends that lived in uh, the little mountain town of Steamboat Springs and they got a job uh, running a liquor store down there originally and my dad now owns a construction business. Um, but yeah, we we went down there, we loved it and uh, moved down there and I spent uh, most of my childhood growing up in Steamboat Springs. And of course you have dual citizenship, was there ever any thought of uh, swimming for the United States as opposed to Canada? I can't say that those thoughts never cross your mind, but um, you know, to do what I wanted to do and have the opportunities that I've had, I could not be happier to swim for Canada. You know, they've done great things for me. They've treated me so well the last couple of years, and like we really have a family on our team, and it's it's quite an amazing experience. Got, what are your goals for the tour and free in London? Uh, my goals uh, are to do <laughs> a best time, and uh, you know, I. I don't want to speak too soon, but uh, I want to do something impressive when I get there. I want, I want to turn people's heads. All right, so you're talking about these guys that are kind of raw still, relatively speaking. Promise for 2016? I, I think that what we're trying to do is raise the standards across the board, and, we, and the trials reflected that, and we had some, you know, our relays were a little bit challenging. I mean, the men's 4x100 freestyle was actually probably a better than we thought it would be going in. We got four guys, and that's a, that's a better relay. Uh, the 4x2 is a bit of a challenge. We're going to have to pick from within, and the medley relay has pieces, but we, need, we still need to get better, and that's the reality, but I think if, if we recognize it and work on the one piece at a time, we'll get better rather than, you know, Swimming Canada needs to, in my opinion, go from if we have 12 really world-class kids, we need to find a 13th, not worry about the fact that we don't have 40. We need to do it one piece at a time. So the men's team, you would say, is not where you want it to be right now? Not even close. And, and the men know that it's not. And, and, but this is what we have, and we're going to prepare them. And we have you know, really good athletes on the men's team. Brent Hayden a, is a great swimmer, and he's a consistent international performer. Ryan's the same thing. Uh, and, and we'll go from there, and, and we'll go a piece at a time. All right, let's go down the roster a little bit. Uh, Joe Bartok, what do you know about him? Joe's a uh, guy uh, been around for a while, second Olympics. He's a our 100 fly champion. He needs to. He's been 52.8 consistently. He wasn't as fast in trials, and and that's a general team with all the guys. And we need him to be a little bit better in the 100 fly. And and uh, he he is a good team guy, and he'll come in and be a medley swimmer, and we'll see if he gets through in the individual event. All right, Scott Dickens is your breaststroker. Yeah, Scott looks. Amazing. Scott's hunter breaststroke was as good as I've seen him look. He's, he's a guy that missed the team in 2008. He's been very hungry for four years. He's done a great job preparing. I, I, again, I, I was really pleased with the look of him, and, and he's a big piece of our medley relay and done a good job. Andrew Ford trains with Don Burton. Yeah, out of Guelph, and Andrew, uh, 400M, 200M, didn't make the 400M, but 200M, he's the, he's the guy, and he's a real student of the sport. I know he spent time with Greg Troy down in Florida, and he's really working hard at getting better, and he's a diligent young, young man, and first experience, and uh, we expect him to be a, a, a good solid 200 amber at, 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 uh, in London. How about Charles Francis? Charles' backstroke, uh, pieces of it were, were brilliant. He, he actually had a breakthrough swim last year at the Worlds on the medley relay. He went his best time and looked really good, and I think he's followed that up the, the trial swim. He's cl clearly the best backstroker in the, in the 100 backstroke, and, and uh, again, I see him getting better as we go. Thomas Gosland? Tommy's a rookie and, and a, bit of a, a bit of a surprise, I would say, to make the team, but he, he got a sound on the wall in 49, and, and those swims that we didn't have last year, we didn't have uh, two guys under 50, and so now we have four guys under 50, and so that's the a, that's a kind of progress that we're talking about. Tommy at 49 is, a, is, a, is going to help the 4 by 100 freestyle quite a bit. All right, again, we're just going through the roster here, introducing our viewers to the Canadian swimmers, you know, people that are not household names, but... They might be in a few years, or you just never know if they'll make some noise in London. How about Richard Hortness? Richard swam the Olympics, and again, he was 49.9 in, in the suit, in, or 49.7 or something in the suit in, in uh, 2008, and got down to 49.2 in the heats, and, and a big step. A, a fantastic, well done, got yourself up, and, and improved his 100 freestyle dramatically this year. His coach, Paul Mizzle, he's done a good job. He swims with uh, Joe in London, and, and so Richard's actually, you know, seven more tenths in the 4 by 100 freestyle out of, out of a guy. And so we keep chipping away, and that, that really will add up pretty good. And Tobias Orwell? Toby, uh, uh, 200 backstroker, um, and again, uh, probably a guy we'll go to in the 4x200 freestyle, uh, experienced swimmer, swam on Olympics before. Um, 
I, the pieces of his toner backstroke were really good, and we just need to get him to close that last 15 or 20 meters and, and see if we can get that down to the 157 range. All right, looks like Colin Russell will be a part of your 400 freestyle relay. Always. Colin's been a proven uh, veteran. He swims relays really well. He's always stood up for us. He's, a, he's a, again, a low 4,900 freestyle. We'll draw him into the 4x2 as well. And he's a, he's a great team guy. Anytime we've asked Colin to go to the well for us, he's done a good job with it, and, and I'm, I'm really happy to have him there. It sounds like the team spirit's already here, Coach. <laughs> that's the distance lane. <laughs> They're drawing attention that they're still in the pool and everybody's gone home, but that's okay. That's, that's the way it should be. Distance pride, right? Yeah. All right, one more guy, David Sharp, 200 flyer. That's a really neat story. I mean, the time is the time. It wasn't a great swim um, time-wise, but this is the first Canadian, first Canadian man from Nova Scotia ever to make the Olympic team, and it's a really neat story. So the Maritimes, it's... it's you know, it's it's a phenomenal thing for that part of the for the part of the country. If we're trying to develop Canadian swimming, we need every province to fire. And so, for them to have an Olympic team member, that's just fantastic. And so, I would expect that this is a catalyst for Nova Scotia to move forward and be better as we as we get forward and become a big part of the national team. That is a neat story. Yeah, it's really really good. Good boy, really nice, fantastic coach, fantastic. You know, probably not an uh, outdoor pool there in Nova Scotia. No, not an outdoor. And they probably still under four feet of snow in <laughs> April. <laughs> you know, but it's it's uh, it's a great thing for Canadian swimming, right? So it's a real real coup, and I think that'll help with that province move forward quite a bit. The Canadians, like many countries, have their Olympic trials in the spring. They try and get it about three or four months out of the actual Olympics. Why does that work for you guys as opposed to say the Americans who have it three, four weeks before the Olympics? I, I mean, I look at the U.S. team and, and, you know, any one of the top four kids are metal threats. And so the idea of having it up right against it, they're going to take who's hot. And, and you have kids that might not be swimming hot in, in July or swimming hot in April and not a hot in July. And whoever you select has a chance. And that's the way it is. Most of the other countries don't have the depth, and so if you look at Canada, we selected these 31 kids. Well, we can do this activity, we can start pooling our resources, we can start really focusing in on the individual athlete and affect change. And so we, the next four months or from 120 days that we had, we feel that we can take those kids and mold them and get a higher level of performance. If you look at Ryan in, in uh, um, 2008, he was 349 at trials, 344 in Beijing. It was 15, 1451, 1440. And so by having undivided attention on a specific event and, and a knowledge of what you're doing, it's the, there's a clarity of purpose. So I really believe that for the smaller countries, having time and identifying who's there and, and identifying what resources we want to put in gives us a, a better chance to be competitive. Randy, good luck in the build-up to the Summer Games. Thanks very much. I appreciate you having us here. Thanks again for coming down to Arizona. It's Randy Bennett joining us, the head coach of Team Canada. Tomorrow we'll preview the women's team for the Canadian Olympic roster. And for now, I'm Peter Bush reminding you, as always, to keep your head down at the finish.